Hello everyone. Um, we're going to be uh, talking about the ocean again today. Um, I've seen a lot of seals lately and I was hoping there would be a little buddy out here to show you. But I think unfortunately they're all off somewhere else right now. Um, but that's alright because that's not what we're going to talk about today. Um, I made up this little chart here in my lap to show you all. So we're going to be kind of talking about that. Um, so today we're going to be talking about some animals called um, Nidaria or Snidaria. I guess I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. I always, it's spelled with a C, C-N-I-D-A-R-I-A. -I -A. Um, and I guess I thought the C is silent. Um, and that's the phylum. So the way that uh, basically all living things are categorized is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And so, um, so the kingdom is like animal, plant, um, fungus, those kind of like very broad things. And Nidaria is the phylum, which is directly underneath that, the next subcategory. Um, and Nidaria is a word that in like ancient Greek means nettle, um, like a stinging nettle. And it's not, and those animals aren't related to nettles necessarily. I mean, all life on earth is related to one another, uh, but they are named that because they have stinging cells uh, and nettles are like, you know, stinging nettles. <clears throat> and so um, these animals are kind of like um, anemones. Um, jellyfish, um, corals that if you touch them, uh, they'll sting you, those kinds of things. And, um, and what's to me is fascinating about them is, you know, out here, I'm out on the water, um, I'm going to give you a little look around. Most of you are probably seeing my plants, water, um, it's really easy to just kind of see it as like, there's not much here. You know, you see the water is blue, it's pretty, it's peaceful, but there's not much there. But actually, there's so much there. There's, um, I believe I read once that most of the life on Earth is actually underneath the surface of the sea. Um, although, don't, I'll have to double check on that. Um, get back to you on it. Um, and so today we're going to talk about those kinds of animals because I've noticed over the past few years, uh, since I moved up here, um, that this is around the time of year that for one reason or another, probably just the way the currents work, the winds work, um, you know, different natural factors like that, that we start seeing more jellyfish around. Um, they come in and I, I think that's really interesting because um, they are not uh, creatures that have like, um, they don't have brains like in the same way that we do or that a lot of other animals do. They don't have those instincts or anything. It's very um, just automatic functions. So they don't have like migration instincts or anything. They just go where the water and the wind takes them. <clears throat> so that they would come kind of at the same time every year is pretty interesting. Um, and I think I mentioned in a previous video that my husband is a kayak guide um, and a scuba guide as well. He does, he teaches people how to scuba dive and um, so I've seen a lot of videos and things from him when he's down with the anemones and it's pretty, it's pre they're, they're, they're so cool. Um, and so the way that they're named, um, so the class that, so they're, they're related to each other, but that's where they stop is at phylum. The class, uh, for jellyfish 
is uh, Cyphosa, which means cup, because I look like a little cup. Um, but for anemones, it's Anthozoa, which means flower animals, um, because they are, they stand upright like this. Um, their order is, uh, for jellyfish, it's, uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, um, Samostome, which means flagging mouth. Uh, so again, so for the jellyfish, they're bringing all their, flagging means like to wave around. So their mouth is waving around, bringing bits into it. Um, and for the order for anemones, it's uh, Essentinaria, which is also the name of, an, there's a flower called an enemy. Um, and it's ha it has that same name. So they're named after the flower on land called an anemone. Um, <clears throat> and then as we move further down, jellyfish are just, uh, it reiterates, Sinead, Sinead, Sinead. They're stinging, they're stinging, they're stinging, they're stinging. Nettle, nettle, they sting. Um, whereas as we move further down into family and genus and species with, um, uh, with an enemy, um, it's, they're called matridium, 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 which means, um, it actually means womb. Because if you look at them, the way they're shaped like a tall and then it spreads out, it actually kind of looks like a female reproductive system, or I'm sorry, like the, like a womb, like a reproductive system. Um, didn't want to be so sexist there. Um, so yeah. Um, so some things that are really cool about them is that, um, anemones, um, especially the kind that live in this area around here. So I'm going to specifically be talking about Matridium, um, versimen, which is also called <clears throat> the giant plume rose anemone. And they can get to be, um, I've, I've seen them underwater before. I've been diving before. Um, I mean, they can be four feet tall and just, it looks like the, the plume at the top, it's like you can hug it around like a tree. They're just so big and so beautiful. Um, and, um, but what's really cool about them is they can actually, um, reproduce asexually. They can reproduce sexually as well, like by releasing eggs. Um, but they can also, uh, reproduce in a, in a way called cloning, so they basically like the way that our cells and our body reproduce through mitosis, you know, just like cell division. Um, they can do that as well. They can just divide themselves in half and then you have two new anemones. Um, and they can have entire colonies of, of jelly, or I'm sorry, of uh, anemones that are all from the same jellyfish that are... Of <laughs> all from the same anemone that they just divided and divided and divided. Um, and they're, they're not the only, they're not at all the only species that does that. Aspen trees do that. I mean, there's funguses that do that. Um, there's these, uh, plants in the desert called creosote plants and they're, um, and they do that and they can actually live for thousands of years. Um, and so, um, and, I just find that fascinating. Um, and and uh, jellyfish are similar in that they can reproduce sexually and asexually. Um, however, they're – it's kind of divided in their life cycle. They can only produce sexually within certain parts of their life cycle. Um, uh, I believe during – so what's called the medusa part of their life cycle, um, jellyfish have – what's called medusa and polyp part of their life cycle. Polyp is when they're, uh, after they've like hatched from an egg and they're, they have to like attach to something, um, kind of like corals do and things like that. Um, and during that part of the life cycle is when they can, uh, they produce asexually. Um, uh, but then once they've grown and developed, uh, and they move on, and they're like free floating in the water and they have the tentacles, um, that's when they can produce sexually. And it's called Medusa because, you know, Medusa, the legend, she was a woman, she had like snake hair and, um, 
And so that's what that phase of their life is named after is the story of Medusa. Um, but, um, yeah, we get quite a few species in this area. Um, there's the lion's mane jellyfish, which I believe is the largest species in the world. Um, it, I can't remember what the record for the bell is. Like the bell is the, the flappy part. Uh, but the tentacles, I believe, they get longer even than a blue whale. Um, or they can. Not all of them do. Um, so, you know, some of them are small babies. Um, then there's also what's called fried egg jellyfish. Um, occasionally around here you'll see uh, called a man-of-war jellyfish or they've got like a sail on them. Um, you'll also see like a comb jellyfish. Um, it's just a good area up here in the north for them because I believe jellyfish need a lower... I don't know if it's an oxygen level or lower salinity, so like a lower salt level. But uh, here in the Puget Sound, Salish Sea area, uh, it's just slightly different conditions than out um, in the ocean ocean. And so it's good breeding grounds for them um, to be able to live. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it for today. Um I'm excited to keep talking to you guys about the ocean. Um, I'm thinking maybe next time we'll talk about maybe pinnipeds, which are like seals, sea lions, stuff like that. Um, although maybe we'll talk about maybe some plants like seagrasses, uh, kelp. I don't know. Uh, if any of you have any ideas or requests, let me know in the comments. Uh, have a good one. Bye-bye.